BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Claim Forgiveness means a claim won't increase your premium if you've been claim free for five years. So your premium stays premium. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers branded policy. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. And we got our loud and local band of the week. This week, it's always naked. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's our loud and local band of the week, Always Naked. You want to find out how you can get their music? Yeah, I love it on their bios. It's together, these weirdos write raw, rhythmic, girl power rock and perform mostly clothed so always naked keep clothes on this time time get, get their new records titled sound check and of course all the info you can get at the bj and Migs page of kisw.com and on sunday nights you like local music you got it eight o'clock sunday nights it's loud and local two solid hours of great music from the pacific northwest bands like always naked is getting banged you know he's a stud about that he surely is oh, yeah. <laughs> well then it is a happy friday yeah, that's right, right. That's right. For us. Yeah. <laughs> go hawks on sunday and go steve right now thank you or yeah, maybe right. his contestant oh, come on yeah. pick a team okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got chris and bremerton chris are you there i am excellent all right steve get out of here go steve go oh, yeah go steve for those playing at home, Chris will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Chris, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yep. What is the tube that carries food into the stomach from the mouth called? Esophagus? Yes. Approximately how many weeks are in two years? 104. Yes. Woo! The Raiders are currently a football team from what city? Las Vegas? Yes. Which rapper collaborated with Corn on the song Children of the Corn? Pass. Who played Leslie Nope in Parks and Rec? Pass. Why was Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade suspended from 1942 to 1944? <laughs> Pass. In the Bible, who disobeyed God and was swallowed by a whale? Uh-oh. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I know this. Uh, pass. That's what it. is the name of the spacecraft that took the first men to the moon? Okay, then. Apollo 11? Yes! Woo! The ice cream company Ben & Jerry's was founded in what decade? 1920? No! Nope, unfortunately not. Sorry, buddy. Chris started well, and, uh, well, ended with four, correct? I have a question. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I do. It's a nitpicky question, but it may not be. It may great. be my It's a wonderful Friday. Well, you know, again, it's a question. Um, are there, like, variable weeks in a year? I, I don't think I knew that, if there are. It, I mean, it's like 365, 364 days in a year. Well, that's not so weeks. it kind of, but I know, but it doesn't come out to perfect weeks. Are you sure about that? I'm because I, that sure. idea, that's the first time I've heard of it. I'm, I'm always pretty heard. sure. And this was well, basically uh, just to kind of cover it just in case. Oh, so you aren't on. sure. That's Because I thought that. And then will 103 and 105 be uh, uh, the uh, uh, good answers for that? No. I you won't said accept a, it. You said approximately. Yeah, I did. Well, 103 is approximately the. That, but that's I, what approximately means. But I, I wrote 104 right here. But 104 so the is the exact answer because I've never heard anyone say there's less than 52 weeks in a year. So when you say approximately, then you've got to you've got to say 103, 105. No, unless, no. That's why. I I asked, but you don't know. There's always 52 weeks. There's never less than 52 weeks in a year. Yeah, but it might be like an extra day or so. No, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's on that. always 52 weeks. That's the idea. Well, all right. Well, well you or, can think that. Or if you're wrong, if you're right and I'm wrong, that's why I asked. Then approximately 103. 105 would work. Well, you can go ahead and Google it while we're playing the game because I really don't care. But you. That's why I hate you. I hate you so much. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, (laughs) if you think there's more than that many weeks, then approximate would mean that those answers would be correct. I love how I can just freak him out over one word. What are you girls fighting about? Dude, he's he's, he's He's so mad. He's such a cranky baby today. He should never be a quiz guy. He's just a bad quiz master. He's been doing it for how many years now? But only because you like to. I would have fired him a long time ago. I'm sure you would have. At least all I know mastery. is I'm in the other room and I'm looking in and I see BJ all animated, Ram yeah. all animated, and Danny just snickering in the background. That's great. Well, you, when you play a game where you have answers, you like to play a game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you ask a specific question mm-hmm. and then you have an answer, and he says, "No, that answer's not right," even though the way he asked the question would make the answer correct. That's what tremendous. irritates me about him. <laughs> it but was he's just, tremendous. He's just lazy. Oh yeah, I'm sure. And you're a baby, Steve. Are you ready? Lazy yeah. Baby. What is the tube that carries food into the stomach from the mouth called? The esophagus? Yes. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many weeks are in two years? 104. Yes. The Raiders are currently a football team from what city? Las Vegas. Yes. Which rapper collaborated with Korn on the song Children of the Corn? Um, that would be Vanilla Ice. No. Uh, Ice Cube? <laughs> yes. Who played Leslie Nope in Parks and Rec? Oh, Amy Poehler. Yes. Why was Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade suspended from 1942 to 1944? War. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah. Hmm. Uh, in the Bible, who <laughs> disobeyed God and was swallowed by a whale? Oh, uh, uh, that would be uh, Jonah. Yes. What is the name of the spacecraft that took the first men to the moon? Ooh, Apollo 6-9. No. Apollo 11? Yes. Nice. The ice cream company Ben & Jerry's was founded mm. in what decade? Just had some last night. Um, nice. 70s. Yes. What is the name of the large shark? Great white. No. Big. No. Baby. No, baby shark. Oh, Steve almost got that perfect 10, but you still win 9 to 4. Oh, sorry, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. All right, there you go. There goes Chris, everybody. He was just entertained by everything. Well, yeah. I'm the best. You are the best. I'm the best. Does anybody know the name of the largest shark? King. No. Oh, well, he's on Flash. Tiger? <laughs> no. Whale, whale shark. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Damn it. That I should makes guess that because you asked a whale question earlier. Yeah, whales are fun. And I mean, whale's pretty big, so I guess you can't get a shark much bigger than a whale. Exactly. Congratulations, yeah. Steve. You won. Steve, he just irritated the yeah, hell out of What was the him. argument over? Well, you know what? You're, see, you're <laughs> smart enough to just ignore the stupid stuff. Uh, 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 you know, have you ever known there to be ever in your life more than 52 or less than 52 weeks in a year? Not that I know of, but so I don't he, really pay much attention to it. Well, he said approximately, so I originally thought maybe I don't know something. I always thought it was always 52 weeks in a year. And I said, so are there times when there's not? And Rev was like, I don't know, but I was lazy, and I just said approximately rather than exactly. Yeah. Cause if you, so I said, if, if you said approximately, mm-hmm. approximately means not exact, which means 103 and 105 would have also been good answers for that because you gave the exact answer. You don't know that, though. Exact is 104. 
So what? What is? You know what the word exact means, and what the word approximately? I didn't means. use exact. You said approximately. Exactly, because there's okay. So divide. So three hundred. Shut up. That's why 103 shut up. 105 works. Dude, Jesus Christ, shut up. Like if you divide three hundred and sixty four by seven or three hundred and sixty five by seven, does it come out to perfectly fifty two? Do you even know that? No, you're arguing a point that you have no information about. You idiot. Okay, so then oh, all right, divide geez. it by seven. What's your yeah? Answer? So divide it. Get the calculator okay, out, Alexa, jackass. Alexa, we'll we'll yeah, let's right have now. Alexa. Jesus right. Christ. That's the way we solve yeah. it with Alexa. <sighs> okay, we're going to divide. Uh, well, we have to d- multiply 365 times 2 first. Well, can we just ask her, is there ever a time where there's not 52 weeks in a year? All right, whatever you want to ask her. I don't know how to ask that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alexa, what is 364 divided by 7? 365. There's no 364. 364 divided by 7 is 52. No, leap year's extra. By the way, yeah, I which would be an approximate. Like. Oh, I shut up, Alexa! I want to weather update, warm up reminder, and music. Do you want to try it? Yeah. So, what was your answer? It was fifty-two. Yes, but you didn't say it. You said approximate, not exact. Because if it's 365 divided by 7, that's not 52. Alexa, what is 365 divided by 7? Is she still trying to figure out a song for Alexa, me? Alexa, what is 365 divided by 7? No problem. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. Alexa, what is 365 divided by 7? 365 divided by 7 is 52.1429. What is 366 divided by 7? You have to say Alexa first. Oh, we never up, have 366 days. <laughs> yeah, when do we have 366 days? Oh, that's days. 365 and 366. Oh, that's what it is. Years, so then yeah. why'd you do 364? There's because never 364. My, because my math was off on that one, because oh, I okay. forgot. So, Alexa, oh, what yeah, is 366 right, divided by 7? 366 divided by 7 is 52.285. See, both of those are points, which means there's an point approximate. One, point 0.1 and point 0.2 doesn't give you a full week, so it's always just 52 weeks. <sighs> Right? I mean, point one, what does that give you? An extra day? That's not a full week. I don't even know. I'm trying to think. Well, yeah. point, there's, I, mean, I don't think, uh, yeah, I think even when it, it won't even give you a weeks. full week. So it's always 52 weeks, which means it's never an approximate answer. It's always going to exactly be 104. That was but, my point. You made me think. Oh, why are we arguing about this? Because you said approximate. And that made me think that maybe there's actually more than 52 or less than 52 sometimes. Because the answer is always going to be 104. Approximately would be 103 or 105. So I thought. What other answer could it have been? 104. It's, it's either 104 or something else. Man, I wish I would have guessed 105. Yeah. Just to make this even <laughs> you know more. You the word exact means the word approximate. They're, I never opposite used words. exact, you knob. I know you used approximate. But the answer is exactly uh, 104. It's cool, never not Cool, congratulations. You win the game. God, you're Unbelievable. such a... You're just lazy. Your 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 whole you're generation is. Ass. You're lazy. That's it. God, you, I hope you, go you didn't want to look up whether or not there was more than fifty two weeks in a year because you're a moron. Yeah. Everybody knows there's only fifty two weeks in the year. You never use approximate. It would be Steve. How many weeks are there in two years? That's how you ask the question. Did you say God? I hope you go to hell. Yes, he yes, yes I hope you go to hell like right now. <laughs> like, you don't understand, Reb. Working with you, I am in hell. Well, good. My God. God, laziness is the... Just do some research. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is time for something, isn't it? Oh, it's time for listeners on the loose. We've already had Rev on the loose, approximately. Uh, you pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Listeners on the loose. Your calls, your texts at 917. On the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle your home and auto with Farmers and you could save up to 20%. 1 plus 1 equals 20. It's bundle math. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select Farmers branded policy. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges are affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. 
You guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Listeners on the loose, what do you want to say? You know you get to say it here. That's right. We don't. We, don't, we do not censor. We just merely gong you. That's what we do. <laughs> Steve does have that rule. That seems fair. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, yeah. you'll hear that. Yeah. And we'll have to say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. Yeah, we won't edit you. We'll just get rid of you. I mean, I think that's the that's the American way. And then for the best of us, we'll just edit you out. Oh, yeah. Well, I, no, all bets are off for the best of us. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, I got a text message. Someone said that everybody should open up a 69 store where everything is $69. Yes. Nice. Oh, or 69 I, cents yeah, or six ninety nine. dollars You'd probably make more money if it was 69 cents. Yeah, because the yeah. dollar store is... Is it works on that premise and 69 cents isn't much less, yeah? Or you just go anything that has a six and a nine in it, okay? That we, would be, we've got everything that's six and nine, six ninety nine, six dollars and nine cents, yeah, yeah. nine sixty nine, nine sixty nine. Oh, okay, now you're really six hundred ninety nine, yeah, you go, you're really stepping out, six thousand nine hundred and sixty nine, yeah. I bet there's a lot of combinations, you know, what? we could go all day. And Forrest, do you think you can do it for us? So, uh, did you hear the guy from uh, the Forrest Gump guy passed away? Oh, the guy that created Forrest Gump, the yeah. writer, I think the writer, right? Yeah, yeah. Winston Groom passed away Wednesday in the state in his home state of Alabama, seventy-seven years old. We don't know how he's passed away yet, uh, but he he did die. And um, you know, the, what a lot of people don't know is the book was very much different than the movie. A lot of different stuff. To be honest, up until about like a month or two ago, when we were talking about it, I had no idea that there, a, I didn't even know there was based on a book. That's how intelligent I am. But also, I had no idea that they completely veered away from a lot of the stuff that's in the book until I like saw like an article about it and I was just like holy smokes like you could do a whole other Forrest Gump movie and it would be super interesting well they did that with uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka they 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 mm-hmm. the original Willy Wonka was a little was a lot less dark than the book put out there and that's why they thought hey let's give it its uh, proper due I bet someday they will Steve I unless they consider maybe some of the material just not cool I don't know oh and you can replace Tom Hanks with Colin Hanks I would like to go a little further than that, sir. Oh, his uh, crazy rapping son, Chet? Yeah, that's it. Um, well, the thing is, is Forrest is supposed to be really taller than that and bigger than that. In the book, he's six foot six and 242 pounds. Oh, so Peter Dinklage. Yeah, Peter Dinklage. They were looking at John Goodman for the role before they picked Tom Hanks, but then they thought, no, we... But John Goodman apparently looks more like the character as described in the book. I could not see John Goodman. Honestly, I can't see really anybody else playing the role of Forrest Gump than Tom Hanks. But see, he's rougher around around the edges. Tom Hanks is a friendly forest and and the forest in the book is not as friendly. He had more of a sex life. He swears a lot in the Jenna. book. Yeah, yeah, he's banging everybody. And he's uh he's got a ba- he's got a mouth on him. So who do we have played the new version of Forrest Gump based on just on that Ooh, much? You know who I was thinking of, your favorite guy, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson? Yeah. But you're saying like a more well, I guess because of the I tattoos. I mean, if you're talking about just the, okay. uh, you know, if we don't have to go with a bigger guy, but mm-hmm. just a guy with an attitude, I think Pete Davidson is the perfect Forrest Gump. Oh, clearly if we're going with a bigger guy, we're going with uh, Captain America, Chris yeah. Evans. Wow. I thought you were going to say The Rock. That's no, a good we're one not going to go with the rock. Yeah, he's, that'd not, be awesome. he's not muscle bound. John Goodman wasn't a muscle bound guy. He was just a bigger looking guy. Yeah, but was... I read that in the book. Forrest Gump became a wrestler. Yeah. All right. Well, the Rock was a wrestler. All right. Yeah. He's. Uh, yeah. He never runs from bullies in the book. He actually punches them in the book. So he's aggro in the book. And uh, he meets Bubba not at the. He doesn't meet Bubba in Vietnam. He meets him at the University of Alabama, which makes sense. That's where you'd see a Bubba. I mean, granted, you can meet a Bubba anywhere in the military. I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, he flunks out after one year and uh, at the university. So he and Bubba then end up in the army together. And it's not Bubba who teaches force about shrimping, but actually a Vietnamese man that he meets during the war. Interesting. Yeah, and Bubba does die in the war. And Forrest does end up giving a shrimp company to Bubba's family and some employees. Do you think um, the, that this version would have been just as popular? Like, I wonder. Oh, probably not. I mean, Tom Hanks. You was, had the sympathetic kind of vibe yeah. from him. He was more of like, you know, the, the the underdog as opposed to the guy that's beating the piss out of the bullies. Yeah, if he's got a foul yeah. mouth and he's not very likable, yeah, Steve, I think I think indeed oh, Tarantino Tom Hanks should version. remake it. Oh, wow. If you want foul mouth, that's the guy to go with. That's true. Funny you say that because apparently they had offered the role of Forrest Gump to John Travolta originally, but he turned it down for Pulp Fiction. 
So oh. could you imagine John Travolta Whoa. as Forrest Gump? Wow. So he no. got it over. He was offered it over Tom Hanks. Yeah. And then, you know, he turned it down. And so then it went well, to Well, that Tom just Hanks. goes to show you the casting directors know anything because Tom Hanks is a much better actor. Nothing against John Travolta, but Tom Hanks, I mean, the, the, he, I, mean, <laughs> I can't imagine Barbarino doing now that. Now I'm trying to picture like Tom Hanks and uh, John Travolta just switching roles and everything. Like having, oh. having Tom Hanks in Pulp Fiction might be oh one of the funniest God. things ever. Doing the dance, doing the drugs. Yes. Oh, my God. Or Tom Hanks in Greece. Oh. <laughs> he probably, well, I would love to see that. See, I feel like though, John, three. Tra- see, John Travolta looks like the kind of dude that would wear one of those jackets right. and be like the Fonz. And Tom, yeah. Who? I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. How about Jenny doesn't die in the book? She actually goes with another man and breaks Forrest's heart. Well, hmm. Yeah. She actually left him while she was pregnant with Forrest Jr. because she saw Forrest kissing another girl. So really, he was the jilter. Ooh, they could just remake it and have it be all about Forrest Jr. Yeah, yeah? what's uh, that? I don't know. Why. That's all I got so far. Oh, that's all you got? Like, okay. maybe, maybe he like then go, just needs to avenge for his father and just like goes finds like the, the guy that took over for or, Jenny. And, oh, and so he goes on a rampage. I don't know. It becomes, it becomes a horror it film. It becomes a horror film. I was going to go something a little nicer. Like, it's him telling about his father's whole life, but what kids always kind of make it up and make it a more, you know, animated and cartoony. Mm-hmm. So something, you know, sweeter and like, yeah, and he flew over there, you know, with his wings. Or you Oh, know. so now it's a fantasy. Now it's, it's, it's crazy, fantasy. Because it's gump. a retelling of, from a child's perspective. So it's Forrest Gump means Harry Potter. Yeah. Duh. Forrest Potter. Why wouldn't we do this? Nice. Uh, I really want the edgy version where he's swearing and punching the hell out of people. Yeah, Harry Gump sounds more like for the <laughs> NC-17 version. Gump, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> funny. You know, Harry Gump. I'm pretty sure that's on point up somewhere. Yeah. Harry Hump. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, look, I think they did the right thing because it was a very successful movie. I'm, I don't think it would have been as successful with any other way than they Someone says, it. how about Samuel L. Jackson as far as Gump? Oh, that would be perfect. Yes. Oh, Tyson Fury. I don't know how, how good of an actor he is, but he's a great, he's a boxer. Oh. Uh, he's a pretty bad, he's a badass dude. I don't know why. I mean, why? Just because he punches people? Yeah. Okay, fair, fair enough. enough. You want a gruff, tough guy? Tyson Fury might be your dude. Yeah, all right. I don't. I I know nothing about Tyson Fury except what you just said. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, he's dead. Winston Groom is dead. Oh, okay. I was like, what? I forgot that's how this all Winston, started. Winston Groom, the author of uh, the Forrest Gump book, is dead. Yeah, right. so I wonder how much like how much he probably got taken care of though when that movie came out. You would imagine. I hope so. I really hope so. Sometimes you sell the rights, Steve, and mm-hmm. if you just sell the rights and you don't get any back end profits, but you know, you know, you know. I mean, we know what's Hollywood isn't known for making great deals for things. They're known True. for raking people over the coals. I hope you're right. I really, really hope you're right. So you said Tom Hanks and Face Off would be amazing. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. How about uh, Dave Chappelle and Ice Cube also turned down the role of playing Bubba in Forrest Gump, according to this texter? Huh. Who did? Dave Chappelle and Ice Cube. Oh wow! They were so they were they were consulted first before they were they were the the first choices. That's amazing. So I said, how about the Revis Forest? I approximately think that would be successful. <laughs> wow. Poke in the bear, Poke in the bear, there, Texter. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, uh, listeners on the list, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. Earlier, we're taking texts and calls from people that do stupid things or just do random things because I saw it on TV uh, or on a movie. Uh, someone said, I drive. I saw a dump truck swimming pool and one of my wife's dumb shows. And I said, oh, that's cool. Realizing the neighbor had a dump truck on the side of his house, I borrowed it, filled it up, and jumped off the roof into it. It was awesome. Wow. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah. There was a recent movie where it was a dump truck swimming pool. What the hell movie was that? It was like a, wasn't it in a truck or something? It had David Spade, I think? Yes. Or like Oh, was that The Wrong Missy? The Wrong oh. Missy, I believe so. Well, there you go. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember, to be honest with you. But uh, I, I don't know if I would want to be swimming. I feel like I would hit the cab or something. I just feel like I would get hurt. Well, you don't have to drive in it. You could just sit there in it. Like, put a tarp down and then fill it up with water and just kind of chill and enjoy the time. Father of the Year. Father of the Year. Oh, Good movie. that's it. That was oh, a fun that's movie. A, oh, so that's a pickup truck that's swimming pool. That's a pickup pool. truck. Oh, yeah. I would do that. I do a pickup truck swimming pool. A dump truck seems like it's pretty intense. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It looks fun. Dump truck swimming pool. I mean, it's bigger. I just would. I, I wouldn't dive in. I'd have to find a way to get in safely. That'd be fun, like at like a parade. <gasps> you just kind of round up the rear, and then there you get all of us are just swimming in a dump truck. That'd be a great parade. But at the end of it, like we're going to be splashing around. Most of the water is going to be out, and any of the water that's in it, it's not going to be water. 
Mm. Knowing us. Well, I'm not necessarily going to go number one while I'm in a pool with you guys. But, you know, Vicky, Aww. if you want to, go ahead. Well, so you, nice. You can't have me in there doing it because, you know, I need a restroom very a, a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> just, just stand good. out over the dump truck and just <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's perfect in a street. parade. Yeah, people love that in a parade. Yeah. It's yeah. like you, you might get candy. You might get something else. Yeah, there you go. Here's, here's a gift from R. Kelly. So is it like any kid out there? I always thought I could fly with a cape, just like Superman. I jumped up the second floor balcony of my house when I was seven years old. I flew straight to the ground with a thud I didn't break any bones so maybe I am Superman that is amazing you didn't break anything seriously from your second floor you landed right kid (laughs) you landed right kid yeah that's you know I had people that wanted to do that and again I was that kid going you understand that he's Superman and you're not right he's not real number one but number two even if he was real He's from another planet that you're not from. You understand? What are you doing? And it's funny that we think it's not the power of this random alien guy that came to Earth. It's his cape that makes him able to fly. So if I have a cape, I should be able to fly. That really is an IQ test for everybody's ch- children because I, I, you know, I would be basically going, look, you can't even talk about your kid. You need to watch him for the rest of his life because he's not the brightest because he thought he could do that. So I want to know, this is a good question. Uh, is it wrong to call somebody... At 11 p.m., if you're waking up the next day at 8 a.m., my buddy and I were having this debate yesterday. Yeah. There's a, as a matter of fact, this is so funny because there's a whole survey done by this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, first of all, um, I think it is wrong if you call somebody after – I mean, it, you don't have to call anybody after 9 p.m. unless it's a massive emergency. You may be able to text them. Um, or even Facebook message them because then they get to do, they get to deal with their alerts. They get to you know they're the ones that can manage mm-hmm. their alerts. Therefore, you know they can't blame you for waking them up if you contact them via text or via Facebook. But calling somebody on the phone, I leave my phone on because there may be an emergency and yeah. nobody ever calls anymore. So I leave the ringer on so I can hear it. My, I, I think I have two rules with that. So emergency, by all means, please call. Yeah, and if you're drunk, that's fine. Oh, why well, you like to record them? No, I just I give you a pass because you're just drunk and you just forgot the concept of time. I've done that before. I remember one time just being wasted at my house, and I tried to call my buddy Revno Brent Amaker. Oh yeah, because uh, at the time I was so wasted, it was like four in the morning, and I was listening to his like side project, which was, which was called Android Amaker. Such like a this good weird, album. Trippy. It's like Devo meets Johnny Cash. Oh, nice. Meets Kraftwerk meets like techno and i'm listening to it and i'm just so gone i'm like i gotta call him and tell him i totally understand this record now <laughs> so i called him and then i texted him and he didn't answer but i let him know he was not mad at me even though it was like four in the morning i was doing this to him oh i would be so mad at you and the next day he says this is the greatest text message i've ever received because it just said brent i'm wasted android amaker dot 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 i totally get it now <laughs> the funny part is uh, I already love the record sober so I don't know why I needed to tell him well this. you went to a deeper level I did I mean sometimes you know sometimes there's multiple levels to pieces of art and sometimes you have to be altered to appreciate those levels so I can't get mad at someone if they're wasted and they've lost track of time but if like you're knowingly that you're sober and you know that you're calling me at 10pm when you know I get up at like 4 or 3 in exactly. the morning like why are you doing that dude yeah. What do you need to know that that's so bad? You You're not my me. friend. I immediately say to somebody, obviously we're not good friends because you don't know what I do for a living and what time I get up. And my good friends know, and they know, do not call me on the phone. If you call me on the phone, you will not ever get a, I will never answer your call ever again. I'll, no. I'll remove you from the contacts. I'll block you. I'll do whatever. It's extreme. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I, I'm, I'm just tired of idiots that just sit there and, you know, know me for years and go, I'm just going to call you with something stupid at 10 p.m. I have two neighbors that recently, you know, was like, hey, let's be buddies. And I, I always lead with, hey, guys, when they want the neighbor, when they want the phone number. Don't forget, I get up very early in the morning. So please don't call me after 9 p.m. I don't do it, but I kind of almost want to. I think if someone keeps doing it, I will. But if someone like texts me at like midnight, I almost want to text them when I get up. Yeah. Because like they're clearly awake, and I understand that. But like I get up at three a.m. and I like to get back to people rather quickly on the text lines. Otherwise, or on the text lines on my phone. <laughs> hey, it's my friend Mike. He's on the text line. But I like to get back to someone quickly because otherwise I'll just forget. So I should just text them right back at three a.m. Oh, oh, I, I do. do you yeah. don't do that? No, I try and be respectful. Oh, not at all. Because, like, I mean, well, I'm the one that has the weird schedule, not them. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your schedule is. It matters if somebody knows you. And it's like, well, you texted me. At, you know, you texted me at, t- at 10 p.m. It's 3 a.m. I got your text. Here it is right back, Here's my son. response. Here's your response. And, you know, eventually I hope they get it. And they go, why is he texting me so early in the morning? And then they'll go, 
Oh, he texted me at 3 in the morning. That's when he gets up. Oh. And if they can't do the math, then you know what? They get to live in hell of being texted at 3 in the morning for the rest of their lives. My favorite, though, are the friends that text me at 3 in the morning because they're still wasted from the night before and they know that I'm awake. See, that's okay. I like those. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> You pick the topic, you guide the show. It's listeners on the loose, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999, but I don't have to 9 p.m. Um, we got more of your calls and more of your texts at 935 on The Rock. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. Let's go to Kevin and Oli. Kevin, you are on The Rock. AJ Shea. Who cares? You know what? I think we should really let the guy who originally said it. I mean, good old Lou Pate. BJ Shea. <laughs> who cares? I don't know where Lou's doing radio these days, but uh, he's the originator, and, you know, I'd like to give him a little love once in a while. There. What you got for us, Kevin? Well, I, I feel like we've got a lot of negativity in the news cycle these days, a lot of negativity around uh, celebrities in the news cycle, and I kind of wanted to get... Uh, the whole idea of positivity out there in the world. And so I kind of wanted to know what everyone's thoughts are on uh, positive celebrity role models. Like, who's everybody's favorite positive celebrity role model? Oh, that's easy. It's Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, oh Kanye, definitely. That, guy, <laughs> that guy's always giving. He's giving he, everything of himself to people. And he's constantly washing and polishing his Grammys. Yes. I mean, <laughs> who else could it be? Uh, you know, I don't think that works as a polish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. I think you get in trouble if you try and use it as a polish. I, I'd have to go with The Rock. I mean, we just mentioned him a second yeah. ago. But, dude, I read his posts. I watch his videos on Instagram. Yeah, sometimes they're 13 minutes long, and it's just basically him telling us how awesome he is in a very, like, random way. But I love him. I always walk away from his posts and his videos in a better mood and almost, like, kind of reflective of, okay, what can I do to be better? All right. How about you, Kevin? Who do you? Uh, who's your favorite celebrity that you think is positive? Well, I know you guys were doing a lot of talking about Tom Hanks, and, and, and I swear Tom Hanks is one of my upper echelon of positive celebrity role models. But uh, i got to say, during this quarantine, uh, I would go with Patrick Stewart. Oh, and because he's been reading sonnets. Yeah. Oh, I've been yeah, kept yeah, up he's on doing the, the whole yeah. sonnet yeah. and, and keeping his fans engaged and, yeah. and, and just trying to set positivity out into the world, whereas there's, like I said, there's just so much negativity going on. Well, and if you watch anything, if you are the, the cool thing about uh, Patrick Stewart and his, and, and of course the entire family did Star Trek: The Next Generation, they they have such love for each other, and they all got along so well. And at conventions, man, I mean, they bring a lot of really a lot of good vibes to their fans, and they still to this day. I, I watched uh, Patrick and uh, Jonathan Frakes on Star Trek Day. Same thing. They have so much love for each other, and, and Will Wheaton was hosting. That's who, by the way, I would say because uh, I'll let the rest of the studio. I'm sure you guys have people, but Will Wheaton. Wheaton for the geek community as well as for the mental health community has been a great mo role model and Wheaton. and uh, I just I just dig Will so much. Everything he does is is really positive. Considering just you know the fact that mental health is tough for him, but he's a, a great voice and a great role model for that, and uh, a good dude in the geek community as well. A texter I just said one, and I totally would agree. I didn't even think about this, but it'd be right next to the Rock, uh, Dave Grohl. Uh, another person on yeah, that list, wow. Keanu yeah. Reeves. Awesome guys who live, who love their fans from Shane and Chehalis. Keanu, and it's lately we've been discovering how much of a great guy Keanu Reeves is. We just keep hearing story after story. Mm -hmm. He doesn't beat his own drum about it either. Where That's the one thing The Rock does. The Rock lets you know what a great guy he is. I mean, Which, as long as know. he's doing great stuff, yeah. I'm okay with. Yeah. And, and, now, if he was like, you know, punching puppies in the back behind the scenes, then I'd have a problem with it. That's my favorite band, by the way, Punching that's, Puppies. That's a euphemism I never heard of. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Vicky, you got a you got a role model you love uh, celebrity style. He's a newer one I've come to appreciate because he's that guy that it's so easy to make fun of him because of the way he dresses and the way he bees. But he's actually done a lot of really awesome things, and that's Guy Fieri. You know that you're, you're absolutely right, mm -hmm. Guy. Um, he is super loyal to uh, behind the scenes. The way he would talk about his crew, like at one point when he was, he, and we, he used to, he used to travel a lot. And so he was on our show a lot, uh, many years ago when Guy was traveling around doing his, his stuff. And one of the dudes on in his crew was really going through a tough time, or maybe a family member was. And I was just fascinated at the loyalty that Guy had, wanting to make sure he could take care of them, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Steve? He, 
he didn't give out a lot of jackets, but he was so happy with how we treated him on this show that he had special jackets made for us, which I will not forget because I know it that was nice. Yeah, he he just doesn't give those out to everybody. Yeah, and he's got a big heart. There's no doubt about it. Well, and, he does so much for charity that I think it's so funny. I remember that comic that was just like, "Why are we all hating on Guy Fieri? He's only raising money for kids or helping yeah. people with cancer." It's like, yeah, he's got you know bleached blonde hair and he wears his sunglasses on backwards but I mean at the end of the day the guy is doing some incredible things for people yeah um, and he's always been good to us oh, and, and and of course Vula's uh, you know a local place in town a great restaurant a great breakfast joint as well as lunch too they have a great relationship and boy they will tell you what a great guy he is too and they and he's been loyal to them as well that's a good point uh, it says he's a guy is awesome in, in Raider Nation baby it's right I mean Guy's a good guy and he's a Raiders fan that's yeah, shocking that was really <laughs> that was the only thing where I thought I don't know if I could talk to Guy anymore more. I just don't know if I can. Love you, Ray. Right. I know I think he's helped a lot of people in, like, in the food industry, especially yes. with the whole COVID thing. And I know yep. he, in, in order to honor his late sister, he officiated like 101 gay weddings like all at the same time. The picture is very, like, it hits me in the feels every time I see it. It's just, you know what? Much love to this guy. Yeah, man. He made, he's made Flavortown a place we all want to live in. I oh, that's a fact. <laughs> how about, uh, how about I go to bed every night and we watch Guy Fieri uh, with uh, Dinah Shrivens and Dives. You just put it on. Yep. It's like a fun way to end the night. Because oh, it's, it's really? not heavy. Really? Oh. Yeah, well, we go to bed because we go to bed so early now. With you know, we we, we put Tatum to the, in her crib and instead of going back downstairs because I got to get up early. We just go right into the bedroom at around like seven thirty ish, and we just put on diners, drive-ins, and dives because like my wife's gonna fall asleep, I'm gonna fall asleep, so we don't have to worry about what we missed. That's our Friday go to. It's just him eating awesome food. We we could pick up wherever it is. Yeah, yeah. It's so good, and we watch it every Friday because it's on all day long. Yeah, it's so great. How yeah, about, the day we run out of episodes, I'm screwed. Yeah. Oh, I know. You the can just watch them over again. It's a, you get to re-eat your food. True. That's true. And this will, guy reheated. And will you remember? <laughs> I mean, he goes to so many places and has so much cuisine that I wouldn't remember if I've seen you it. You know, if we time it right, we'll be awake for the moments that we fell asleep on, and we'll Ooh. fall asleep on the moments that we were awake for. Nice. It seems like a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> How about you, Rev? You got a, a celebrity you think is a positive role model these days? Yeah, I would like to say Joe Coy. Um, oh, yeah, he does nice a lot call. of fun stuff around here. And then his last Netflix special was in the Philippines, and he was so stoked to do it that he brought a whole bunch of um, other Filipino comics and acts and stuff That's like cool. that so they could experience actually being in front of a crowd of the, their own people. Let me just say this about Joe Coy. I, 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 only because of the fact that we've had many He's people. very attractive. Well, yeah. beyond that. I mean, I, that, that's of course. But <laughs> look, we've had a lot of people in the show and a lot of celebrities. And Joe Coy is huge. He's probably one of the biggest comics there is today. And the guy gives me his phone number. He goes, look, anytime you're see, I got an extra bedroom. You're in L.A., you come stay there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I took his number and I thought, well, that's nice. People say what they say. Then he texts me back and, you know, I text him and go, hey, man, uh, thanks for the number. It is mine. He goes, I'm not kidding. You're in L.A. And if you don't stay at my place, I'm going to be pissed at you because you're, you're, you're such a good guy to us. You guys treat me so well. Uh, and you know he means it. You know, yes. you know he's genuine. Um, and I, I love him for that because, dude, he's mega big. And yet it doesn't affect him at all. All. He's still the same guy we've known when he was just doing comedy here in town. Anytime anyone asks who's your favorite person you've ever had on your show, it's he's always number one or number two. Like just at the top of my head, I'm always like, oh, Joe Coy's the best. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. he's he's so much fun, and he's got a great attitude. That's the other thing. He really does have a, a good attitude in life. And I, so, I, who's Danny? Did he? Oh, Danny's uh, Billy Joe. It's 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 not actually. Oh. I am very excited. Oh, then Dexter. That. No. What about noodles? No. You're going to have somebody completely doing different. Anything. Oh, I know. and Joel. It's no. It's Leo DiCaprio. None of them have been doing anything. It's from Titanic. Gosh. Mike Herrera. I wish. James no. Cameron, right? Is what I don't know if he considers as a celebrity. No, Russell Wilson. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. He has to be Russell Wilson. I mean, he does. I am very surprised. Oh, yeah. Do you, every time I, I follow him on Twitter and Are see you talking him. about your friend Russell Wilson yes, from, from, New Mexico, from New Mexico or <laughs> actual Russell Wilson? He brings from the me, Seahawks. he brings me Dion's Pete. No, and <laughs> Russell Wilson from the Seahawks, of course. Yeah, no, every time I see him doing stuff with the kids mm -hmm. and just his positivity through everything, it's just like, man, I, I aspire to be like him. You know, I mean, if they, I throw Pete Carroll in that mix as well for similar reasons. Yeah, not what he does with Russell Wilson's kids, but just like you know how he runs that team and, right. and yeah. how he he has. It seems like he just wears his heart on his sleeve, especially these days. He seems to be just really all about caring for his players and what's going on in their world. Plus, also Russell Wilson will talk to you sexy before you go to bed, so you know. Go Hawks! Yeah, I'm gonna see y'all in the morning. 
You know, people want to make fun of Russell Wilson uh, who don't really know, but the guy, he, he lives his talk. He, he lives his philosophy. That, that, that's the bottom line, is, is that he really does live and breathe and believe, and you see the, 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 the results of this. It's hard to make fun of somebody that this is my philosophy, and it's not just a faker where they do the positive affirmations, but then they really, deep down, are negative. Behind the scenes, they're punching puppies. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yeah, I go to bed. And, he, and he continues to get it done. I mean, it's just... Just, it's just amazing the, the the kind of being he is, and you know, he's got a great life. I'm a, I mean, every you look at every aspect of Russell's life. This, you know, I think he's able to pay his bills from last I heard, which is always good to hear. And he's got uh, a he's got a you know a very wonderful wife that seems to dig him. You know, I mean, <laughs> we get the bedroom we get the bedroom video, and she's like, "Go Hawks!" I mean, I, I mean, that's the life everybody wants, right? How many athletes have that situation where it seems like every part of their life seems to be really cool? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's I mean, you know. Got a text I definitely throw out there. I think there's going to be a blog on KSW.com in the near future. Uh, today's the anniversary of Jimi Hendrix's death, you guys. Yes, I oh, read that this morning. 50, is it 50 years? I think it might be the 50 anniversary, 50th anniversary. Isn't that insane? It's been yeah. 50 years since his passing. I'm pretty sure it's I, 50. I believe it's the 50th anniversary. I've been reading a lot of 50s, yeah. Um, yeah that is a blog up on KSW.com where it's a bunch of people from our station talking about their favorite Jimi Hendrix songs. And I, I, and I put up on mine, so I'll give a quick spoiler about Jimmy. But what what I love is that you know, Jimmy would just he made some amazing songs about some very random experiences, like what inspired him to write a tune. Action. I mean, you know, he have a fight with his girlfriend, and all of a sudden, here's the wind cries Mary. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you and, and you just don't even think that that song was about bad mashed potatoes. <laughs> Which is really what, you know, that allegedly is what everybody says is that his girlfriend at the time, and her middle name was Mary, uh-huh. made him bad mashed potatoes and he had an argument about it. She, and supposedly she verified the story. And, and so he wrote the song The Wind Cries Mary because of bad mashed potatoes. It's insane. Well, it's like I just saw there was a clip of uh, Steven Tyler doing an interview. I think it was like an old interview he did. It may have been with Howard Stern. And he's talking about the, the song Sweet Emotion. And the lyrics behind it, and it was about, I think it was Joe Perry, it was about how he hated Joe Perry's girlfriend. And when you suddenly hear listening to the lyrics, it's like talking about things and nobody cares. It's like, oh my gosh, okay. Yeah. Like the whole song was just about how annoyed he was by one of his, it might not have been Joe Perry, but I think it was, but he was annoyed by one of his bandmates' girlfriends. Isn't that something? And he just wrote a whole song, which turned out to be a monster hit. Yeah. Yeah, you got to love that girl for that. Oh, I'd like, be talking to all the other guys in the band. Be like, you know, Tom, yeah. your girlfriend's too cool. You need to find a, a way worse person. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm. I'm in a slump creatively. <laughs> all right, there's a big question that has to be answered. What do Ryan Castle and handcuffs have in common? I'm going to tell you at 9:49 on the Rock. DJ and Migs mornings on the Rock 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and handcuffs have in common? Uh, I have a fuzzy pink version of myself. (laughs) I've seen them. That's after a bunch of uh, Cosmos. Yeah. Wow. That's, I'm a little disturbed. Steve likes both of them when they're furry, according to one texter. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Vicky has been known to use both in the bedroom. Hey, welcome, Vicky. He's very handy. It's true. Yeah. I have two of them. <laughs> I've got nothing. Yeah, I don't think it. Early Monday morning, the cops in Florida pulled over a gentleman uh, who was 48 years old. His name was George. Uh, by the way, he's a convicted felon. They found ammo in his car door. So, yeah, he was arrested for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Not supposed to have that. Yeah, that's a no-no. Uh, how about this, though? George was already wearing restraints before they cuffed him because for some reason George had a steel bondage collar locked around his neck. <laughs> and there was another guy in the car with George. He was arrested for having meth. Uh, they live at the same address. We just don't know what relationship these two fine individuals have. What kind of party were they about to have? Yeah, I mean, you've got ammo and you've got meth and you've got a bondage collar. These two were ready for to get yeah. after it. Yeah. That's some weekend right there. That's, That's my night tonight. <laughs> Florida living. Ryan Castle, he's up next with your morning 12-pack. BJ and Migs play of the
the day. I walked in the room and Steve is talking to his phone saying, basically, very bad thing, very bad thing, very bad thing. I, I want like to know Steve would do. how to say in Spanish, would you like to eat french fries out of a certain part of my body? Yes. What? And uh, a certain uh, uh, body part face. Yeah, you, uh, Richard, your face is involved in this conversation. Hey, Richard face, would you like to have french fries out of the backside? Oh, nice to see that you're working on a multilingual uh, yeah. aristocrat I mean, bit. Steve is really a 10-year-old boy. It's, I mean, he really is. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. Can I leave things off of a bankruptcy, like my car? You have to list all of your assets and creditors when you file bankruptcy. So by, you would have to tell the, the court and the trustee that you have the car or that you have a car loan. Uh, you could say that I want to keep my car and continue to make my payments on the car. Uh, but the, the court will need to know that you have a car and, and that may, you may have a payment on the car. So by leaving it off the bankruptcy, if you mean that you cannot disclose it to the court, the answer to that is no, you must disclose it. However, that does not mean that you'll lose those assets. You'll be able to keep things like a car and a house in almost all cases, but you must disclose them to the court. Um, but you'll need to continue to make payments on a house or a car that you intend to keep. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com. That's choose the right chapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.